Ladies and gentlemen, it is crazy right now in the news with the things that are happening in the Middle East, but I am not going to talk about that any further. Prayers to all those involved, but you guys come here for finance content. That's exactly what we're going to get, okay? Um, so back on schedule, SoFi uh, is actually going to have their Q3 2024 results starting October 29th at 7 a.m. The call will start actually at 8 a.m. So you guys know we'll be live to cover it, okay? Directly on this channel, um, I'll be here. Now, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. If we remember from last quarter, we actually saw a Q3 2024 guidance come in and it all looked extremely strong. Adjusted net income, uh, either between low and high, let's just pick the midpoint, so $635 million, growth rate roughly around 20%. Adjusted EBITDA will come in at about $162.5 million with uh, an adjusted EBITDA margin of still 26%. Gap net income of $42.5 million, and that'll bring in around $0.04 cents of diluted EPS. Okay? So knowing all that information, very exciting quarter for SoFi, except I actually think it might do a little bit better than that. So flipping over to this spreadsheet here, where I'm just porting in the last roughly two years of SoFi's business, so then we can see how it compares to Q3 of 2022. Okay, uh, up until last quarter, we are just breaking, just getting very close to that 600 million mark. And uh, if I pull this away, this is exactly what they're guiding for. So 635 million in the midpoint, 162 and a half million of adjusted EBITDA, and 42 and a half million on uh, the net income side, bringing in a net income margin of about 6.7%. Now, as you guys know, uh, I've tracked since SoFi practically has been a public company, all of the quarters that they've announced those earnings and then what was actually expected versus the announcement. That is what these charts are showing. Let me just remove myself or, or lower myself really quickly. You can see that in the black lines, this is how much SoFi has beaten by their estimates every single quarter. There has not been a single time where they've missed estimates. And in fact, they've beaten every single time. Okay. I suspect that this quarter will be no different, especially because there were a lot of tailwinds this quarter that they were not expecting. Let's imagine Anthony Noto and team would even bear to price in a 25 basis point cut into their guidance, which they did not. But let's imagine you know, well, we don't even have to imagine. We did see a 50 basis point cut here in September, which does give them a little bit of wiggle room to even outperform by selling loans and also re-originating some new home loans, student loans, things that are going to boost up their earnings for the full amount of Q3, let alone the total amount of outperformance, which by the way, all this time of beating and outperforming was during periods where they were seeing headwinds in terms of a macro environment, raises in rates that were unexpected, okay? Not lowering rates that were unexpected, raising rates. So this was uh, harder for them, and yet they still outperformed. Now we're actually getting a large tailwind, and so this is what I suspect. Roughly, whenever you uh, take in the last two years, because I didn't want to go all the way back where, you know, the business was actually just much, much smaller than what it is today. So I took the last two years, same as the, the points that what we're looking at right now, and looked at their outperformances. Well, what we saw was an average beat in revenue of around $40.4 million. And then on adjusted EBITDA, what we saw was a rough beat of around $24.4 million every single quarter, okay? On net income, it's a little bit different. I can actually bring you guys over to this slide right here. Because we have not been net income positive until the last three quarters, we can only track it just so slightly. So uh, the dollar difference for the first quarter that we beat was 37.9 million. Next quarter, 20.1 million. And then the last quarter was $9.9 .9 million. Okay. This, the percent beats are still drastic, very, very large. I think this will continue to tighten just a little bit longer. And so what I actually put here was a beat of 7.5 million. So a little bit less, 
but still within their uh, you know beating range. Now, if you're actually looking at it from a percent basis, it's not even close, right? The difference between 42.5 million and 50 million is nowhere where we've seen the 132% beats or 134% beats that we've seen in just the last two quarters. So it could even be much more than what I'm suspecting, but I have to be a little bit realistic here and realize that as time goes on, those beats are going to tighten quite a lot. And so this is exactly what I'm anticipating. Let me take another zoom in here really quick. I'll bring it over here and just take a quick look right here, for example. So in net income, what we're actually going to see is potentially a 13% quarter over quarter raise from uh, last quarter, Q2 of 2024, or a 27% year over year raise, which would be faster than Q2 and faster than Q1 both put together and raise us back to those great quarters that we've seen and you know sort of put these ones behind us that have been a little bit slower, which has allowed Wall Street to put a little bit of a, a worse multiple on SoFi's business. And the same thing can be said for uh, EBITDA, okay? Not only are we going to get back to the quarter over quarter EBITDA rising over time, but we're also going to see potentially even faster growth rates than what we've seen year over year, you know, since Q4 of 2023. This would be massive reacceleration, really good for SoFi's business, and would allow Wall Street, hopefully, to see that SoFi does have the ability to reaccelerate growth, especially just in the smallest sliver of tailwinds that we've seen this quarter next quarter will be fully in the cycle and much better uh and then this is the margin which right now they're suspecting 26 percent i actually think it could get anywhere as high as 28 percent okay and then uh, net income 50 million great margin of 7.4 uh percent very healthy but those are my guesses for SoFi's quarter for Q3 very early on. Right now, we still need to see website traffic for uh, you know September data come in for SoFi. That'll allow us to potentially guess member growth, product growth, and then I can go through all my statistics like I do every single quarter. But early on, just looking historically, what they've guided for to what they actually get is looking very positive. And I do think that they are going to reach not just their averages, but potentially even more than that, considering they're in tailwinds and not headwinds like they usually see. But that's the full video. Let's keep it nice and short. If you guys want to help the channel, please check out the sponsors down in the description down below. Check out Moomoo. They're a brokerage platform to help you buy stocks like SoFi, potentially even learn how to trade and sell options. Thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate your time. Bye-bye for now.